Hey everyone, what a big and eventful evening in news. I mean, we've got it all, don't we? I tried to, as you might tell by the title, fit a number of ideas in at once and came out with, well, what you see there. Hey Barry, how are you doing? Miguel, thank you for the message, by the way. And that was very kind of you to, to chime in and you know see if hey if I'm gonna be doing a live stream tonight. And thank you all for you know visiting earlier today and indulging my pop culture interests because as I like to report, hey, there's more going on than just the Raiders or the NFL for that matter. But and it's really important to, you know, be reminded of that. We have Gary and Conley. The Gary and Conley update. We have Gary and Conley. Silence my Hey, how you doing, fellow Zenster and Rick Rice and Barry Lee? Hello. Hello, Zensters. Hello, Zensters. There's a lot of stuff happening out there in the world. And you would say Gary and Conley, I get. Oakland Raiders, I get, obviously. Las Vegas, I get, obviously. NBA playoffs, I get, obviously. But Met Gala? Monday night, the first Monday of May, is annually the night of the special benefit party for the New York Metropolitan Opera, the Met. And this event has turned into something akin to the Academy Awards. It's what you would get if you mixed the Academy Awards red carpet with a Vogue party show and throw in a little bit of punk and modern and festive and desire to be hip into one space. And that's what, the, that's what you get when you get the Met Gala. Bottom line is, if you're interested in fashion, hot women, and the latest in what celebrities are wearing and thinking, not to mention what they're talking about, then the Met Gala is where you want to be at, either real or virtual. At least that's me, okay? Uh, I, I live for stuff like that. I'm sorry. And if I ever am fortunate enough to meet Mrs. M Mrs. Abraham, and she's gonna be into it too if I don't happen to meet her there. In fact, that almost happened once regarding the Oscars. That's another story. That's another story. Now, Ryan Seacrest said he was, yeah, Barry Lee. I, I noted that. Ryan Seacrest is moving to New York. He's uprooting. He's uprooting. And he's just starting anew. And, you know, good on him. I'm putting the metadata in here. Good on him for making such a bold change, but look, he's going to be pulling in twenty million a year. And look, this is a guy who, when I met him, he pulled up in a four-door Bentley Continental with his assistant in the front seat, gorgeous assistant, he in the back, and a driver. Okay. And I have never seen a Bentley Continental like that in my life. That was nice. I've seen Bentley Continentals before, I haven't ridden in one or driven one in one, during one, yet. But this was a Bentley Continental, as they say, for your ass, okay? It was nice. But my point is that for all of that, Ryan Seacrest, I do not believe, has had anything where he has pulled in 20 to 30 million a year. This, with Live on Kelly, is that gig. This is the gig that Michael Strahan had. And you would say, as a number of people this morning said, why... Ryan Seacrest. My mom said, doesn't he have enough jobs? Everybody on Twitter said, doesn't he have enough jobs? I said, he's like the Jamaican. You know, he's got a lot of jobs. But give it to Ryan Seacrest. He gets the work. He really does. And that's just how Ryan does it. You know what? The next time I get a chance to meet him, I met him once, I'll ask him. The first time I met him, I was trying to score an interview, and I gave him my car, and he said he'd follow up, and didn't. Happens. But the bottom line is that uh, I, if you haven't figured out by now, I love the finer things in life, even though I don't have, you know, money 
that pushes me to be able to buy all the finer things in life. So I started a media company so I can get into these areas, right? And be part of pop, pop culture. Really, that's that was the idea. I got tired of being the person on the outside looking in, and I wanted to be inside. And so that's what all this is about. Now, I want to... Hey, everybody. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Barry. I wanted to read your note. I, I saw where... This is Barry Lee. Barry Lee writes, I saw where Ryan Seacrest said he was moving to New York and we would be walking across the, working across the hall from after each show and doing his radio show live from New York now. Yeah, good for him. Hey, Donis, how are you? Hey, Go Cubs. Go Cubs says it's going to be weird seeing him live on Kelly as her new co-host. It is. You know, though, hey, they have a kind of a interesting simpatico. Yeah, I don't know if you saw them this morning, but he fits in a way that I wasn't expecting. He's no Michael Strahan, but he is, as my mom said, a true professional, right? A true professional. And by the way, would you believe the way the internet work and works in technology? I have to tell this backstory before I go on to the other issues of the day. But when I was oh, five, six years old, I had asthma. And the asthma mainly was because it was for emotional reasons uh, around what my parents were going through. Although I didn't know that at the time. And I was, you know, arguably going to die. And then they, what happened was that my mother found a doctor, a learner, and he, this was in Chicago, and he went through my mom's entire life and me and everything else and how she was taking care of me and what I was eating and the whole nine yards and determined that what I told you was the reason I had the asthma. It was, hey Golden State Raider, it was emotional. Emotionally triggered. If any of you have, out, out there have kids, watch, or plan to have kids, watch how you treat and what you say to them because kids really feed off of your emotions. Okay, and I'm an example of that. My parents' bad emotions quite literally kill, almost killed me. All right, but Dr. Lerner, it was Dr. Lerner who discovered that. It wasn't. It was that, and so that resulted in my folks splitting, and I'm here today. My mom found Dr. Lerner online. Not like Facebook style, but just discovered that he was, you know, 89 years old, still kicking. Just a moment ago. I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, the man that basically is responsible for me being here today is still alive. And hopefully I'll get a chance to, he probably won't remember me, you know, see him uh, in his later years. But isn't that something, modern technology? I just had to share that because it's the spirit of the night. Jimmy Kimmel has on a special show talking about his week old newborn sad story of a heart problem the kid had and how cedar sinai hospital and the children's hospital of los angeles stepped in to save his baby son's life heartbreaking story and hats off to jimmy kimmel for having the the courage and the openness to tell his story before millions of people now, something else. Now, yeah, it's, it's smart business. It, it, and Donish, you're, you're quite right. You're quite right. Now, um, the whole point is, hey, Mark, it's very interesting. Zinni connects us for many reasons. Yeah, it does. It really does. It really does. Now, let me get on to the stupid news of the night, and that has to do with Gary and Conley. As anyone remembers regarding my draft recap I gave the Raiders a B and the primary reason for the B had to do with uh, pure and simple of Cam Robinson is to me the best the best offensive tackle available okay and at 24, he was the best for the Raiders. Because, as we know, Donald Penn's contract is up. He's 34. 
The Raiders need an insurance plug-and-play left tackle there. Cam Robinson fits the bill. He is, as I said to Alabama head coach Nick Saban, the antidote for Miles Jarrett. Okay? So, Garen Conley is not arrested, not detained. In fact, he basically went through, in a sense, almost what Blaine Gabbert went through. You would say, huh, what? Yeah, Blaine Gabbert, 10th pick in the 2011 draft, 10 behind Cam Newton, went to the Jacksonville Jaguars, as we know, had a, a rather inauspicious first season. But he was presented as this choir boy, okay? This choir boy, all right? And guess what? Uh, Blaine Gabbert was actually detained, never arrested. Only one news organization reported that, but not all the others. If it had been Cam Newton, you would have heard it from everybody, kind of like Gary and Conley, right? Because, you know, look, Gary and Conley is a black guy, goes to a big school. Same with, you know, Every, everybody else, you know, who happens to be African American and the, the light gets shown on them much brighter. Okay. But for me, because of that, the Raiders soon just simply skipped over him. You don't know how that case is going to come out. Instead, what the Raiders did, as many of you know, they got a lie detector test done on him and he passed it. Fine. So they took him on that basis. Well, now it was revealed today, and I know you all are filling in the blanks, but I just have to say how stupid this was. Just, ugh. ugh. Just, you know, yeah, I saw that Golden State Raider about the, the, the tape. And here's the thing, all right? He admitted to having sex with her, which was right. Golden State Raider was a stupid pick. He admitted to having sex with her. A woman that he had met, I guess that night, in a bar. Now, the police say they have a, and then for some particular reason, she turns around and claims the R word, all right? And I hate, I hate saying that word, it, it, ugh, I hate it. Especially because he hasn't been charged with anything. We don't know how this is gonna come out. Now, Marcus says he's not buying the story. It's not a matter of buying the story. She said something. And at first, when the two gentlemen, his friends, said, hey, look, she just wanted to get in a room, you, me, everyone else was all ready to say, you know what, jail her because she's lying, right? That Because it's all we know. But then, here comes the lawyer. Here is my question. And I'm going to curse. So hold on for a second with the comments, because I have something I really want to say. What kind of dumb fuck agent lets his client go out and party and meet girls on the eve of the draft? And I say the eve, I mean like over the year before. Okay, but here's the thing. This wasn't even the year before. This was like a pre-draft party. Definitely within the sphere of influence of the agent. Who is this guy's agent? I don't care if they didn't have intercourse. When, and it, what you wrote, Rick Rice, was I can't repeat, I don't want, I can, but I don't want to, is, is, is a form of sex, okay? And my point is that it, it, it doesn't matter if she says that it was forced and it, it's not right, okay? Period. It doesn't, it is not right. And for the Raiders to arrogantly bring the young man in was stupid for this reason. Because had he not been drafted, there would have been less of an opportunity for her to theoretically go after his his future wealth, right? 
oh, he wasn't drafted. He's been punished because of this by not being drafted. But now, because he was drafted at a high level, suddenly that action creates this gigantic sword of Damocles hanging over his head and the head of the Raiders. And it puts her in the driver's seat by being able to make life that much worse for both organizations, both person and organization, by her possibly trying to get something more. Because now he's a raider. Okay? Whew, man. I mean, how stupid can all the parties involved be? She hooking up with him so quickly. Okay, look, I get it. It happens, all right? But there was something there that she should not have done either, obviously. But the simple fact that we're talking about it and not the Raiders' great draft mars the Raiders' draft. It puts a gigantic black mark on the draft. And it takes away from the attention the other picks so richly deserve. Bad, bad stuff. All right. I know it's still under investigation, but my point is it's just, look. Uh, let me go back to what you guys said. All right. I apologize. Ruben Foster, number 24, Conley, second round. Um, I'm, I'm not sold that Conley was the right guy. Just because there's a, a spotlight on him. Psychologically, it's interesting how we try to fit in scenarios for the draft pick after the draft pick was made, as opposed to, well, like what I'm doing, saying, hey, look, don't take him at all. You got Cam Robinson. You have, of all the positions, defensive back was the one that had the most players. You could find that other Conley around there. So I'm not sold that he was the guy that high. I'm not sold on that. Now, okay, very interesting, God connects us for many reasons, says Golden State Raider, who is a veritable font of wise comments tonight. <laughs> now, hey Miguel, how you doing? Barry Lee says, I'm okay, just not feeling really real hot right now. Are you under the weather, Barry? Bernard, hello, Golden State says, Cleveland Police said they have film of Connolly and girl walking out holding hands. That's... I think that's something. And it was a stupid pick. And I, you know, I wish him gone speed and through this. He's going to need it. Uh, he really is. And Golden State Raiders said he would have fallen to the draft board. We could have had him in the second round if we really needed him. Ruben Foster, number 24, Conley, second round. See, I say no, Cam Robinson. We have a problem at left tackle. And that... Uh, Florida State guy is not going to solve it. Sorry to tell you. Hey, Don. Hey, let's see here. Bernard says, I don't believe he, I didn't believe he would be there. Bills would have picked him up. Rick Rice says, they didn't have intercourse. I think she just, okay, I got that out of the way. Uh, Somerville, I don't understand why it's such a stupid pick. He was probably going to be picked in the first round regardless who picked him. Yeah, that's true. But the whole point is that it was a stupid pick for the Raiders, not in general. Um, Jermaine, not in general, but for the Raiders, it was a stupid pick because of the fact that at 24, Cam Robinson was sitting there undrafted. And he was, by anybody's measure, in fact, I think Mike Mayock even said this prior to the Raiders picking, that Cam Robinson was a perfect fit for the Raiders. And I wasn't the one who told him that. But you've heard me say that. Cam Robinson should be in Raider colors. He should be an Oakland Raider. Period. Now, go Cubs. Okay, Marcus. I wouldn't have minded the tight ends getting him at 18, but I'm glad they got Adoria. Adoria is a great pick. Uh, a lot of what Rick Rice says, a lot of money grubbing women the lie through the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, but here's the thing, Rick Rice. I would have agreed with you had it not been for the sex allegation or the new news, right? 
because now that basically means they're both lying. And as we say, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Okay. Wow. This isn't, you know, yeah. Marcus says, tick. Yeah, true, Rick. Riley, hey, Zinni, where would you like to see the draft next year? Oakland, but we're not going to bid for it. And, and the NFL tells me that Oakland's not in the picture. <laughs> Boy. Oakland needs to be aggressive, but absent that, I would like to see the draft back in New York or Chicago. Those two will be good. Or, or Washington, D.C., as we talked about the other night. I think the draft in the nation's capital would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, and you're, of course, innocent until proven guilty. And there's so far there's no evidence. That's right. But the whole point is that because of the Raiders' actions, the spotlight that's been placed on him now is shown on the Raiders as well. Golden State Raiders said in bold letters, I missed this. Uh, I apologize. He picked DJ Hayden that almost died, not a corner that allegedly raped some, what the, yeah. He was definitely going to be drafted by level, high level, regardless, if not by the Raiders, the Ravens. That's not my point. Again, that's not my point. My point is that he was not right for the Raiders at 24. Cam Robinson was. I'm not talking about other NFL teams. I'm talking about the Raiders. Yeah, he was going to be, expect, he was expected to be drafted a lot higher. But the bottom line is he wasn't. He fell to 24. And I understand what Reggie was thinking, but Cam Robinson was a better match of need and athleticism. Period. Miguel, hey Zinni, what was such a good Raiders NFL draft? I don't understand that question, Miguel. I'll get to it. And the law can get you. Golden State Warriors reminds us and says it's still under, still under investigation. Like the Las Vegas move. Yeah, that's years off, man. Uh, Marcus Mario says it would have been a horrible story if that young man was denied a high pick selection because a girl telling lies. I'm glad he got picked. That's not my point. My point is that he was not the right fit for the Raiders at 24. That's my point. I don't care about anybody else. He was not the right fit for the Raiders at 24. And in fact, what bothers me is at the NFL annual meeting, I specifically made a point of telling Reggie McKenzie to get Cam Robinson. So you know I'm pissed off. Just saying. Uh, let's see, I could have made better picks. The Golden State Raiders said he could do better than Reggie McKenzie. Miguel Rose said the Raiders got a bunch of really good draft picks in his first NFL draft. He, in, I didn't understand that, but okay. Uh, let's see here. John Marks is here. Hey, John, how are you doing? Uh, let's see here. Dallas says the... Las Vegas move is a distraction like Conley. Interesting. Rick Rice says, Zinni loves Cam Robinson. No, I love him as a Raider. You know, I think he would be a great Raider. Cam Robinson is the antidote to Miles Jarrett. He is the Joe Thomas of our time, I hold. Or if you like the Lincoln Kennedy, I hold. Zinni Raider could have moved out of 24 and picked Cam Robinson later. No, take him at 24. Cam Robinson at one point was discussed last year as the possible number one pick in this draft that just completed. That good, okay? He had the injury, then the question was how is he going to you know, come back after his, his, his uh, shoulder injury. He came back with flying colors, had a great 2016 season. Uh, let's see here. I agree, however, Raiders defense is now much improved after this year's NFL draft. Uh, yeah, maybe. You haven't seen these guys at work. I, I am still... No. 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 The Raiders could have tr traded up higher into the round. I don't... The wild card is budget. I don't know how much money the Raiders intended to spend this year. All right? And that really dictates... More than anything, what you're going to do in the draft. So, John Mark says Conley is not a good pick, period. Golden State Raider, okay, Zinni, that should be, <laughs> John Mark says I should be the next GM. <laughs> and Marcus Mario says Derek Barnett tore Cam up. No, actually, Marcus, I saw that video. He didn't tear him up. He had some good plays, he had a few flashes, but Cam had. A good game against him as well. I watched out for that, all right? 
And that was more scheme than anything else. So I disagree with you there. And Nick Saban would agree would disagree with you as well. I know. Drain from Cam Robinson would have been a great pick for the offense, but he need as badly as secondary help. We don't need secondary help at that level. We're not that bad. The problems on defense are scheme are scheme related, not personnel. You have to remember last year the Raiders went through a wholesale personnel change. I mean, look, we got and then the year before that, I remember we got Bruce Irvin and then we brought in Khalil Mack and all these players now suddenly were still bad. Has it ever occurred to you that at some point you start thinking about plays and not players? I'm sorry. I just ugh, it drives me nuts. N no, we're not. The scheme is that bad. It's not the it's not the personnel. It's the scheme. And that reliance on two gapping and and you know force fitting a Seattle slash USC style defense into the personnel that are not precisely suited for it. Nah. Everyone here tweet this live stream to Conley. <laughs> Cam Rob was the pick we should have taken at 24. Sorry he's in the backfield was atrocious. Hey look, the backfield wasn't atrocious. The scheme was bad. The scheme was horrible. Sean Smith was bad when he got up against speed wide receivers and we let Hayden go so we needed DB bad. N no, we needed a different type of scheme. Can I ask you guys, I'm a, I want a really honest answer. Why is it that you don't talk about plays, formations, stunts, timing, line spacing? Why don't you think technically? Why is it always just personnel for you guys? I just want an answer from somebody. Anybody? Anybody? I'll get to that question about you. Uh, anyway, because it play comes down to making plays in the ball. But Bernard, if that's the case, and you say it comes down to making plays, the play gets you to the ball. All right. If I tell you to give you an extreme to run a prevent defense and the other team is running at smash mouth, I'm not putting you in the right position to make a play, am I? I'm, not, I'm just giving you a, hyperbol a hyperbolic example, okay? All right? Now, here's an honest answer. Barry says it's because I, compl I don't completely understand the plays. Barry, thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your honesty. If you don't, if you don't understand, just say, hey, look, I don't get it. Fine. Because... John Pagano came over ski control. We only have Smith and Emerson. All right. Zinni, how do you think Ken Norton and Pagano are going to be able to work together? Who has the final word? Norton has the final word. Uh, but I believe it will be a collaborative decision-making process in the end. Well, DeRio has the final word, really. Miguel Rose says, we the Raiders have all the right players, but our coaching staff is garbage. Miguel, I don't think the coaching staff is garbage. I don't think it's these extremes. Okay? Oh, the staff is garbage. In fact, let me, let's, we're, we're talking about this, but let's, Let's take a look at right where that's something here. Because I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to um, see something here. To put this into a bit of a... Uh, a what? A more nuanced conversation. All right. Hold on a second, Bernard. Um... NFL defense ranking 2016. All right. Let's see here. Take a walk with me, folks. Take a walk with me. <laughs> 2016 NFL team defense statistics. We have Houston Texans. Arizona Cardinals, Minnesota Vikings, Seattle Seahawks, Jacksonville Jaguars, Ravens, Patriots, the Rams, Chargers. Let's see. The bottom line is, are we at the bottom? No, we're not. We're far from the bottom. We're not stellar. The Niners were the worst. The Browns were the worst. Colts, Dolphins, Redskins. Saints, and then there's the Raiders, okay? And uh, 
16 games, we gave up an average of 406 yards. All right. And let's see, what is this? We had rush yards. This is, to me, this is the hallmark of a great defense, rush yards. And the Texans gave up 99.7 rushing yards per game, right? By contrast, we were the Raiders here were at uh ew, look at that 117 which and then you know 117.6 the raiders which isn't as bad as i expected it to be okay and that's not so yeah we were, we were definitely down at the bottom but you have to remember a lot of games Look at our record. A lot of games, we're in a position where the other team had to throw to stay competitive with us. The Raiders, we forget, had a great year, and they went to the, the Raiders went to the playoffs. So we seem to react as if, oh, it's all bad, you know. Now, Golden State Raiders says, NFL players know all coverages and plays. Uh, I don't know there. Melvin Loverjoy says, I agree that a scheme needs to change. We were at least blitzing team in the NFL. I know the secondary was a weak spot, but pressure helps the entire defense. Yes. Miguel Rose says, the Raiders coaching staff can't make good coaching decisions and play calls. And let's see here. And I think Somerville says the Raiders secondary is ranked 24th last season. I think that's about right. And Donna says, not to digress the conversation, but I have a question. What if we march to Raiders headquarters and express our concerns over Las Vegas move? Great idea. Let's see. Uh, Barry, I understand all coverages and concepts. John Marks is with, says, I'm with you, Donis. Yeah, me too. Corvette. How are you, how you doing, Corvette? Can Del Rio get us over the top? He might never make us a champion. No, I think he can. Look. He got us to the playoffs. So, it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, we expect better, which means what? Moving beyond the first game, performing better, winning. Because we won that game, what would have, what would have been the next stop? The AFC Championship, possibly at the Coliseum. It's become a nice feeling, right? From a nice, warm, and fuzzy, exciting feeling. Didn't have it. Well, the bar is higher this year. Okay. And let's see here. Yes, the NFL is a pass-first league. Jermaine Somerville says the NFL is a pass-first league nowadays. Rush defense isn't the hallmark of a good defense anymore. The Raiders' one defense wasn't stellar either. We need to draft defense, defense, defense. I disagree with you from the standpoint of being able to play it a defense, what I call it inside out. Like, I'm a lover of the 46 scheme, if you haven't told, been able to see that by now. And the 46 is about pass pressure, but it has the added benefit of allowing you to effectively stop the run. And that's why I'm a big favor of it. Uh, let's see here. Hey, I need to get to better for tomorrow so I can do things. I think this is uh, Go Cubs saying, bye, y'all, and I'll see y'all tomorrow on the next stream, and Barry Lee get feeling better also. I second that, Go Cubs. See you, and Go Cubs. Miguel Rose says, Corvette, we, the Raiders, won't ever win a Super Bowl championship as long as Jack Del Rio is the Raiders head coach. Woo. Donna says, I know, it's a losing battle. Uh, let's see here. John Marks, where are your, Golden State, your tickets, Golden State Raider? ha, ha, ha. Oh, Golden State Raider got his Cowboys versus Raider tickets for 900 bucks. Woo! Yeah, feel better, Go Cubs. Thank you, Go Cubs, for stopping by. Please feel better. And, and uh, you'll come back now, you hear? Zinni, is the Coliseum reboot still in play? Uh, you know, I don't... Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it's still up there. I'm still pushing it. So it's, it's still in play for me. <laughs> but... That's in, you gave me an interesting idea, John. Jermaine Sundell says, I like our current coaching staff 
without a good secondary, you can't blitz linebackers or DBs when the defensive line can't apply pass pressure. And this is where I disagree with you regarding, regarding scheme. Let me show you something here regarding what I'm talking about. Let me uh, give you a visual of what I'm advocating here, okay? First of all, let's go to a Raiders defense. Defense, excuse me, 2016. And uh, let's go to the film room, shall we, Jeeves? To the film room, room. To the film room. Yes, to the film room. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only thing I hate about these videos with these defense highlights is you don't always get you don't get the kind of all 22 highlights that I want, all right? That's what you don't get. So I'm looking for, I'm gonna have to do this a different way because I'm not gonna get it looking on Google because all I get are the hits. I don't get the scheme. I don't get that all 22 look, right? So let's see here. We've got boom, Raiders defense 2016. And, and uh, those are the highlights. Ken Norton, more highlights, more highlights. Oh, by the way, this is something that I made in 2016 that underscores what I'm talking about with respect to the Raiders defense, all right? And um, it was widely seen and you know, by a number of people. And uh, let me show you this. Uh, let me skip this video. So I'll skip it right there. And this this has to, this is what I'm talking about when I complain. When I complain about gap control. Now this is preseason, but this is what I'm talking about. And, it, and this is underscores. This underscores my point. You ready? All right, I'm gonna so over here. Now this was the Tennessee Titans, and I'm gonna. Turn up the volume here, there, so you can hear it, and then do that, and then let it play. This is from the Open Raiders Tennessee Titans preseason game, but the Titans won 27 to 14. You can't really hear that, can you? As with uh, let's see, that is a little silent. So let me, rather than asking you to hear me there, since the, since you can't really hear the speaker, I'm going to talk you through this. What I'm explaining to you here, all right? is how the Titans were able to design a play with DeMarco Murray and take advantage of our backside run defense problem. Now watch, this is a this is basically a, what we call a, a blue formation, all right? I'm going to freeze it right there, okay? You've got, but it's a different type. This is more a, a cockeyed eye. Some people call it a cockeyed eye. Yeah, it's the preseason game, right? And yeah, yeah, it's preseason, but the bottom line is formation structure means everything. In this instance, you have a, the Raiders defense, but they're not in the gaps. They have three linemen here. They have the end over the the tight end over here, right? They got a double tight. They're facing a double tight end look from the Titans with the two running backs, okay? And I want you to watch what happens when we run this kind of neat when we when the Titans run this neat counterplay against us, watch this. Watch this. And this is a problem that has plagued us for much of the year in the run defense. But it's a byproduct of this loose system. I hate it. Watch. Now I'm describing the formation and the players. Miguel said it, bad schemes equal bad and horrible coaching. Yes. Watch, let me forward this a, a little bit. Now nah, let me back up a little bit like that. And so I just wanna get you to where, all right, they're about to run the play. Watch carefully. And watch what I want you what I look what I want you to look for is what happens over here. 
okay? Watch. Watch. Here we go. You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. And I want you to watch as I point out to you the down blocks when the play happens. I'm going to stop this once it once it gets going. I'm going to freeze this, okay? And I will see here. Before this, there we go. Right there, okay? Because I really took you through, I really did a, a proctologist level of analysis on this dang thing in the video, which is worth watching with your speakers up, okay? But you see how, all right, let me go back here. And there, okay, watch this. The reason why I had to do this is for copyright reasons. I had to be careful not to get into a copyright issue with the league. But you notice how the the run flow is this way? You see how the run flow, and look, right, stop it right there. You see how the run flow is in that direction? And look what happened. Our backside in got caught. And he gets, and see, look, he was so far back in here, we didn't have to block him. There was a hole. And it's gone. All right? See that? It's stuff like that. That's that's what I'm talking about. And that had happened at various times through the year. Because we are not gap control oriented a la the Tampa Bay defenses under Tony Dungy or the Dallas defenses under Tom Landry. All right? So that was my issue. That was my huge issue. Now, Golden State Raiders said I look hella skinny on the video. Are you trying to say I look fat now? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, Golden State, I know fair use. I'm very careful about that because I've been through battles with the NFL on that. I've won all of them. I want to keep my streak intact. Now, so, but that, my, that's my point is, let me let me show you a defense that I love. I mean, love. Tampa Bay Bucks defense Dungy. Dungy. Let's see here. The Tony Dungy designed Buccaneers defense. That defense. That's what I'm talking about. Levy Smith talks about he's a 4-3 guy. And I'm a 4-3 guy. Let's see if this is the kind of video that I'm looking for. It may not be. It may not be. There's Davo Sweeney. Yeah, coach is talking about the uh, scheme from a place I'm not really crying to. These highlight films. I want something that's more scheme oriented. Oh, uh, let's see here. Bucks pressure owned the day over the Seahawks. Okay. Uh, those ultimate Buccaneers highlights. But I'm talking. I'm trying to find the Dungy example. And so far, I'm not. Ooh, I'm not getting there. I'm not getting there. If I type Tony Dungy. Tony. Tony Dungy. Oh, sorry, I may be missing what you guys are saying in a second here. But I'm trying to find that definitive YouTube video that shows the Bucks defense in action. That's what I'm looking for. And it's not happening. Oh, let's see here. This is, this is NFL Films, Tony Dungy interview. 
the top 10 defenses in history. Uh, the 2002 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, the Dallas Cowboys. All right, I'll come back because I don't want to lose you guys. But my point is that the, the Bucks. It's a lot of the repeating videos again and again and again. Uh, the Bucks gap control defense of the day was just incredible. It really was it's just something to behold. One of the great defenses ever developed. Just was. So, not a lot here. I'm trying to think of, hmm. All right. I know some of you are yelling, give it up, Zinni, give it up. Hold on a second. If I can't find it this last go around, I will... And I will basically bag it. But it's 2008 Bucks highlights. No, it's not here. The 2007 Buccaneers. All right. I've got another idea. I've got another idea. Since I can't find it on YouTube, I'll go to. Yeah. I'll go to. Google. But the bottom line is I'm trying to explain by the proper example of scheme. And I like just I just get these pictures and stuff. And I'll, you know, okay, I'll I'll have another another kind of a clinic on this thing at another time because I want to really I want to emphasize this point. I really do. Oh, wait a minute. I just figured it out. Tampa Bay Bucks. Tampa 2. I'm sorry. There it is. Tampa 2 defense. Got it. I believe I've got it. Yes. Okay. Yay! Woo! Sorry, I'm a football nerd. There we go. Okay, you see this? You see how it's designed to apply pressure in coming off nose tackle on a three technique. Tackle in ends, they're kind of on a wide tackle six look. And then you play zone behind, and they really stick to this. They really stick to this. Considered among the best defenses of the millennium. All right? They really stick to this. Now we've got see here whoops excuse me got more examples here all right but they really stick to this and my point is that the Raiders they have, they have disciplined areas and the Raiders are by and large undisciplined and so I'm not that was a rudimentary example and I, I could go to a diagram of my own, and I think I will next time to, to better demonstrate. That was on my part, kind of a crappy demonstration that took a bit too long to set up because I wasn't ready for it. I should have a push button. I'll say, ding, there it is. I'll get there. Now, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Fair use is abuse for profit by like Raider Central. Hey, Raider Central YouTube channel, they better watch it. Someone is going to go too far. I don't know who's running that. And that channel is going to wind up being shut down. They routinely post clips from, including me, other channels without asking. And they think it's okay. And I, I believe, I think it was Barry Lee or someone else who told me that they had a suspension such that they couldn't do a live stream. Good. Jeez Louise. Go and say, Raider, I have them and kept them. People let them go because they can't afford them. Oh, talking about season tickets. <laughs> Mikey Raider runs Raider Central, I, I think. I don't care who runs it. It's just that they need to stop doing it. I don't care if the Pope runs it. It's wrong. All right? The Sports Fury, isn't that, that isn't cool to use other people's content from YouTube. It's also illegal. Okay? <laughs> it's not only is it not cool, it's illegal. What else did I miss? 
Miguel Rose, four-time Super Bowl champion Bill Malinowski is the greatest and best defensive player of all time. No, he's not. Mike Singletary is. No. I'm sorry. Mike Singletary is the best. Mike Singletary is the best is the best ever. Mike Singletary is the best ever. 50 Chicago Bears. You want to talk about a hitter? Bill Romanowski has never ran a defense or hit any player like Mike Singletary. I'm sorry, Bill Romanowski and Mike Singletary are not even in the same zip code. No, absolutely not. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, no, no. This, oh, now you got me riled up, Miguel. Now you got me riled up. Oh, man. Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary. This is where Mike Singletary highlights, where you have the individual highlights matter, okay? You've got to see this. I mean, this, wow. Mike Singletary is, he is old school intensity, okay? He really is. He really is. And this is my favorite defense. Oh, oh this is it. This is it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This is my favorite defense. Folks, the Chicago Bears defensive line. Dan Hampton, Steve McMichael, William Perry, Otis Wilson, Mike Sill, Terry Wilbur Marshall. And in the secondary, the great, great players, Richardson, Frazier, Dwight Dewerson, Gary Finsick. Boy, oh boy, okay? Folks, this is a defense, all right? I want you to watch this. What? This, this is a defense. Look at this. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's pressure. I mean, it's set up. It's set up to apply pressure. Look at how close to the ball they are. See that? You know they're coming. And then watch what happens when the ball is snapped. Watch this. You want to see destruction? Look at that. Look, look at, are you kidding me? Are you, excuse me. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is a defense. Look at this. Look at this. Barely catches the ball. Barely gets the ball away. Okay? Barely. Barely gets the ball away. And here's another one. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Gets the ball back and boom. Oh, that's the same dang play. What's going on here? Huh. What kind of clip did I have? All right. First and 10. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. Look at this. Look at that. He's on the run. Look at the fridge going after him. Boom. Can't get the ball away. That's pressure. He's out, okay? Look at this. Look at this pressure. Look at that pressure. One-on-one -on -one blocking. All right? This is what I'm talking about. That is a perfect example of scheme and personnel and pressure. This is a textbook, folks. A textbook. And look at the result. Down for the count, all right? Down for the count. I'm sorry. I want this is this is defense to me, all right? I'm sorry. That that is that's defense. And then you want. Let's see here. Somebody else talks about the hit, all right? The hit. That's the Giants versus the Broncos. I'm not talking about that one. Forget that one. Let's go back and get some more Singletary highlights here. Yeah. Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary highlights here. Yeah. That's right. What's going on here? Yeah. Mike Singletary highlights. Hey, it's not moving. Doggone it. Come on, move. 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 History. Let's see here, Mike Singletary highlights. This is slow. This is slow. Why is this slow now? Just because I want Singletary highlights. 
But you know what, though? If we had, my point is this. If we had ran that kind of defense, we very well may have been the ones people were talking about as opposed to the Bears. But we didn't, okay? And there's a reason for that. Because the Raider philosophy under Mark Dav Al Davis has been, it's been man for man, but it hasn't been that kind of pressure, all right? It hasn't been that kind of pressure. So that's that's the issue. This is slow, folks. I'm not going to make you wait for this all the time. I just want you to see. Um, I want you to see. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Go. All right. There we go. Mike Singletary at work. Calling the defenses. Flowing to the ball. Making sure the tackles are correct. Keeping his eye in the backfield. Look at those. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. Then he's dropping back. And he moves in to make the tackle, all right? Are you kidding me? Okay. You're going to tell me that Bill Romanowski is better than that? I'm sorry. Mike Singletary just hit me right there. Are you going to tell me Bill Romanowski is better than that? Oh, I, I just can't see it. Oh, no way. But I'm for pressure defense. <laughs> yeah, I'm dialed up now, man. <laughs> single turn can beat you with just one. Yeah, heck, single turn can beat you with one eye. Okay, he beat you with the other eye tied behind his back. Dumb QB should have thrown the ball away. We have we have haven't had a stout defense since they came back to Oakland. No, we haven't. Remember, well, John Marks may remember. Remember, eleven angry men in the '60s in the early '70s. The Al Davis pressure man for man defenses. We haven't seen anything like that. We've had these. We we haven't had defenses that dictated a game. And that you can't put personnel in and expect the personnel to do it on their own. Khalil Mack did a fantastic job, considering I think he was hamstrung. Imagine if he were in a forty six. Oh. Oh, my God. They would have put him in the Hall of Fame after his first year in the league, let alone his second. Are you kidding me? Jeez. Jermaine Sunbill says, It's really difficult to man a Tampa, Bay, Tampa 2 defense properly. You need a penetrating three technique, Warren Sapp, and an inside linebacker who can cover and play against the run, Derek Brooks. And I disagree with you. You have to teach that, though. For example, we have Mario Edwards, who is every bit... That penetrating three technique, but Del Rio and Norton and company don't ask him to do that. They ask him to two gap. Think about what you just wrote. You said penetrating three technique. No defense in the NFL has a freelancer unless the freelancer is allowed to freelance, okay? The only way you get someone who's a penetrating three technique cap tackle is if you train him to be a penetrating three technique tackle. That means no two gapping. You cannot two gap and play a three technique. It doesn't work. It's one, one gap, you go through that gap. That's the idea, okay? That's the idea. That's the idea. Oh, Vegas bought land you heard for New Stadium shaking your head. Yeah, it wasn't the Raiders, it was bought for the Raiders. It was bought for the Raiders. And I was told when I inquired about the land that they couldn't release the name of the actual buyer. Woo! Miguel Rose, the 85 Bears had a great defense. That doesn't make Mike Singletary a good defensive player. What? Look at how much damage. Wait. Ugh. Miguel. Miguel. I just, I just want to know. I just have one question. What brand of weed are you smoking? I just, I can't even fathom how someone could assert that Bill Romanowski, not even the captain of the defense, is better 
than Mike Singletary? Even Bill Romanowski wouldn't tell you that. If Bill Romanowski came up and said, yeah, I'm better than Mike Singletary, I think Bill Romanowski in his dreams would blast Bill Romanowski to say. Yeah, exactly, Sports Fury. Miguel Rose is telling us that... <laughs> Miguel is just saying this for argument. He's just saying this for the sake of getting me dialed and riled and all that stuff. Okay, you, you did it, all right? Even though it's 129 at night and I said I was just going to do this for an hour because I'm exhausted. Uh, I will close with this. Miguel Rose. No, man. No, man. Stop smoking that stuff. <laughs> oh, boy, boy. Bernard says, I feel Edwards has improved greatly. Edwards needs to be a three technique. Fernandez says, we need to make a protest somewhere to tell the NFL the area is not happy now. This whole deal went down and we want an investigation. Call the mayor's office. Call the Oakland mayor's office. Uh, Oakland mayor is uh, 510. Uh, let's see here. 238 3141. That's the Oakland mayor's office. Call the mayor's office. 510-238-3141. Let them know how you feel. That's the best way to do it. Huh. Rick Rice says, this is a classic old guy versus young guy argument. Jordan or, Le or LeBron. Are you calling Miguel old? <laughs> Miguel says, okay, Zidio, he'll just agree to disagree. No, Miguel. I'm challenging you to a debate. You bring your film, I'll bring my film. We'll have some fun with this. I am not taking this sitting down. I'm not taking this. I'm just saying that I will debate you. I will challenge you. And we'll let the brethren decide. Decide. You pick the date. And I'll pick the date. And we'll do it. We'll have a live stream. You'll have your argument. Do you have Skype? Can you go on Skype Live? We'll make this so you can go on Skype and we can have a back and forth. And you can pick your film, and I can pick my film, and we can, you know what? We should have a panel here. We should have a panel. Maybe, you know what would be fun? Is if I could actually get Bill Romanowski to, to participate. That would be fun. <laughs> you know what would be even more fun? Is if I could get Bill Romanowski and Mike Singletary. That would be a dream. Uh, one can... Bernard, it was a fun stream. It was. Yeah, me too. So Miguel. Miguel, uh, Miguel, Miguel, come on, Miguel. Don't don't just... Go Warriors. Corvette said it. Go Warriors. Go Warriors. Flash with Thunder says 2015 Broncos versus 85 Bears defense. I like that one. I like that. Yeah, like a panel. We should have a... a, a we have a, a panel on this. You know? In this corner, Miguel Rose with his homespun logic. In that corner, Zinni Abraham with his scientific, he says, approach. Because he has a big ego and a bigger head. Just saying. <laughs> Miguel says nothing. Miguel, give me something. Say, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Sports Fury is right, man. The debate is already over. I mean, it would be Sports Fury is called. Sports Fury wants to moderate. Ding! You got it. I like this, you know? I like this. This, it's almost, this feels like the, the cyber equivalent of the the one-on-one uh, -on -one basketball. You know, who got next? I got you. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right, folks. Yeah, it must got it's over. <laughs> This is great. Oh my God. Oh, Lonely on Top. Yeah, man. You, Lonely on, lonely on Top, you, uh, I'm sorry, you know, you gotta have to go and find somebody to get on top with you, but that, cause this is over. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Oh man, oh man. Oh boy. Well, Rick Ross, I, I care about, I mean, I know I have, Rick Rice, I think 
you know, I have, what I'm trying to do is, here's my problem overall. I want, my demographic is 85% male and it's 15% female and I need more women. And so I have to have other topics and I've got to reach out and, and balance my demographics. Otherwise I can't do well. You know, I didn't want to be in this like little bitty niche because it doesn't make as much money as I'm used to making. Uh, given what YouTube is going through, the views are fine, but you know, I want women and men. And if there's a way to weave in more women and do the sports, I'll figure out what that is, or get the women subscribers. You know, I'll 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 figure out what that is. But the bottom line is, if I pay attention to the Ryan Seacrest or the Met or something like that, that's a female oriented audience. And that's, and I want to balance. Besides, I just don't want to talk about football all the time. I like it, but you know, I want to reach out. I want to conquer the world. Does any conquers the world? Whatever. Okay. Joey Fernandez. Yes, but we need news coverage that people get informed. The NFL can have some sort of heat and something. You know, you're right, though. And here's where, and I'm glad you said that. I'm on NFLcommunication.com, and I should, I will read you on a daily basis the transaction reports. You're right. So I'll do that. John Mark says, Ryan, who? <laughs> Boy, Ryan, Ryan Seacrest got blasted this morning. You know, he really did. Yeah, no football all the time. In fact, radio people have said that it get actually more, you know, buzz and traction when they just talk about stuff in life once in a while rather than just the one thing all the time. You know, it's a good idea to have a balanced diet. Just saying. And um, why does the media hate the Warriors so much? Ever since KD went to Golden State, the media wants them to be the villains. I'll explore that. Great point. And just to know... If I tell the mayor's office how I feel, what would happen? Nothing. I want us to unite and make an impact. I agree. But you can also make that call because everyone will say, well, eh, I'm not going to do that because. Well, how do you know? Yours may be the call that makes the difference. Never know. John Mark says, I used to do that when I was on radio. So see, you're talking. You know what I'm talking about. Sitan so, 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 so says, if the team moves to Vegas, do you see more accusations regarding radio players like Conley's situation? Wow. Uh, Yes, I do, but it'll be you know it'll be a fun show to look more at that. I had Mr. Sutton from Cops on, and we alluded to that in our great conversation. Maybe I'll have him back with another Las Vegas person. We can talk more in depth about that. Maybe I'll find somebody from the Bunny Ranch. I'm not kidding. All right, folks. Vegas is Sin City. No, he's not reaching. Somerville, he's not reaching. I mean, it's a great question. It is a great question. Uh, okay, folks, I'm going to sign off. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. We'll come in and celebrate a Warrior win. And if you're at the game, follow me at Zenny62 on Twitter or Instagram. Let me know that you're there, and I'll repost your photographs and re retweet them. All right. And Rick Rice closes us out with the immortal question is Joe Flacco an elite quarterback I leave you to answer that one in fact I know just the person I'm going to ask to come on and address that question all right I'll see you all later peace love soul and remember Miguel Rose I'm challenging you Mike Singletary the best ever all right good night everybody Good night. I'll see you. See you.